with Chad Ubre. Yeah, it's like um, I don't know, man. It's like I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't have anything to say, bro. It's it's for the talent, man. It's, you know, uh-huh. I don't know if like I just believe in the work, you know. Right. And like, if the work speaks, I have to do less explaining, uh-huh. you know, because I would hate for um. Sometimes the uh, what is it? <clears throat> uh people's assumptions do better for you than you giving somebody something very specific. So yeah, if I'm like, hey, man, this is our goal, and you were like, and you received it as, man, I thought this was, that's it? You know? So mm-hmm. that's why I'd rather just like that to work. Yeah, but that's why we're here, because a, a lot of people may look at 85 South and be like, oh, they just, you know, they got people that are already on, you know, they got yeah. DC and Carlos. Oh, no, nah, it's far and from that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. See, that's what people don't get, is they right. think, a lot of people may think, "Oh, it just happened because they're no. there." No, the work is what I want to get into today. Man, it's it's um, I'll say this: there's like nothing we do is no accident. Totally. Yeah, like nothing like yeah. fall, there's nothing that falls out of the sky. Yeah, you know. So, all right. So, um, I what do I, do I need to do some some special? Like, uh, my name is Chad Uber, and I, yeah, I don't even do titles, <laughs> man. It's not even my thing, bro. I don't, you know. No, I think. Uh, is this do, on? do I need one? Okay, yeah. Are we I'm on? Not even, we out here? And I'm used to, you know, you know. You're all right, dude. As soon as we met outside, he's like, "Yo, man, I don't even know why we're here." You know, yeah, I don't, like, oh, not, we ain't doing you, much you, out here. You'd rather talk to, you know, Los or, or I've, I've had Los on or, here. Um, yeah, yeah the, and I've had Clayton on here. Man. Like, it's but it's about. Am I doing it? Is it left? There we go. Head, you don't know how headphones work, man. Yeah. I was, you know, <laughs> I just put them on. I don't. Know. <laughs> I'm usually like when I have the headphones on, I'm just listening. You know, when you're doing our commercial, whatever. Right, right, yeah. yeah. You're just behind the scenes. I'm not even paying attention to what they're doing because I know that what they're gonna do is is what they're gonna do. So. And then you just you just turn it into like hashtags and like. Uh, right, oh. man. Oh, I don't even do the social media. So. Oh, word. Yeah, we. It's. Um, Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know how to log into the social media. Be honest <laughs> with you. So, I actually hate social media. Um. Yeah, it's a whole machine. Yeah, so hashtagging isn't my thing, man. I have to like, you know, uh, my role. I don't even like to say position, but my role is more like uh, just kind of quarterbacking, man. From the you know, calling from the big picture. What does that mean? Um, so you know, when you think about um, like strategy or anything that you do, especially when you have a plan, there's uh, people that are actually executing on like the very specifics of it. And then there's somebody that has to like, from top to bottom, that the machine is moving and every button is being pushed and those sort of things. So that's my role. I I hate to say position because I still have no problem. You know, I'll take trash out and get cars and <laughs> drive for people. It doesn't bother me. But so you're like you're like the puppet master. <laughs> I'm not even comfortable <laughs> with saying that. So, um, not, I I just you know, from the big picture, I just you know I try to see everything. Okay. That's, that's, I'll just say I'm not even comfortable saying puppet master because we all are very, um, we're all very like included in the process. Mm-hmm. It's not like, hey guys, you do this and listen to what I say. Um, my position is more putting these guys in the best possible space and place with the best possible tools and environment as they can possibly be, so they can exhaust every single talent that they have. How many people are on the the team? Uh, total. Uh, I'd say, uh, let me talk about it. In front of the camera, I'd say um, it's four, probably rotating. Obviously, that's Carlos, Chico, DC, uh-huh. Clayton. And then behind it, it's myself, um, our director, Joe, our audio guy, Kat, um, our music director, uh, Jay Wynn, and there's another camera op. Um, Craig and actually there's another one we just brought on his name Jeez. is Darius so yeah it's about man. what is that like eight of us seven nine I don't know my math isn't the best yeah you, you can tell and then it rotates man because what will happen okay. is we'll go to a city and, um, you know just depending on the space because different spaces you have to shoot different or capture differently so we may bring on another camera op or two yeah for like the live shows and stuff right right, right 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 and then um you know, we're all working, moving around. So Joe may be in L.A. working on a project or um, another camera op may not be here. I may not be here. So you got to have somebody kind of fill in. But 
I mean, we kind of created a system where it kind of, to a degree, it runs itself. So. Yeah, you got to have a system in place, especially with all the people you're working with, even the talent alone and matching up with their schedules. That's yeah, man. Be that's a honestly, chore. Uh, mom's calling. That's uh, your mom's calling. Yeah, yeah. No, oh I, man, I'll, I'll get that later. Um, uh, that's probably the hardest part, man, because it was it was our you know it's funny even saying I remember when because we're not even that old, but yeah, it started like December of 2015. Right? Yeah, so roughly <laughs> we're going crazy. on our third year, but but uh, unbelievable. I just dude. remember when it was like. Everybody had time. Like, what y'all doing? You know? Right, right. And right. that was it. You know? <laughs> and it was like, it didn't matter if it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If y'all free, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And then it became like, you know, what's your schedule like? You know? And then it turns into well, get on people's books and calendar invites and scheduling out two, three, four, five months ahead. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the evolution, man, yeah. is like, I remember it seemed like when you started in December, you were almost, you were almost just dumping them, almost like flooding the streets, like crap, yeah. you know, like they just wanted to get it out there and right, then, right. then start to draw it back and build the demand. Like you just wanted yeah, that, that awareness. Was, um, was that the strategy there? The strategy was like, let's figure it out. And like all of us are, felt comfortable enough to, um, we don't mind figuring it out like in front of people. Huh. You know? Yeah. Um, so I think some people take the, uh, mentality of, um, well, let's get it perfect or whatever the case is. But like, you know, this isn't like uh, a car we're building where there's specific specs. Like it changes mm -hmm. all the time. Like DC may go to LA and see something that just inspired him totally different. And now he comes back with a different perspective. Or I may have worked on a project and not known like, oh shoot, lighting, if you light like this, that's, di you know. So you, we all come back with different perspective and then like experience and all that helps for it to evolve. And then you just learn, you make a lot of mistakes on the go, which like expedites the process of getting a little bit better. Yes. So what, what like, I think what I've learned is like. <clears throat> you can turn that mic towards you there. I'm sorry. It's for the people. Yeah, yeah. For understand. the culture. Now, right. No, no, is... Normally I'm you telling. The, <laughs> right. I can hear you, bro. Um, <laughs> no, normally, uh, I'm sorry. So, so for us, it's more like. I look at it like um, I don't have like the perfect answer of what it's supposed to look like, but I think when you try a lot of things, you know exactly what it's not supposed to look like. Hmm. So it's almost like um, you know, if you're like people, are, like man, what's the what's your what's your perfect job or like your perfect uh, partner, you know, boyfriend girlfriend? Like most of us know what is not from like exes or ex jobs, but no, none of us really know. Like man, the perfect job is I clocking at this time. <laughs> none of us really, really we just kind of working toward that. So like. That's how we look at um, the podcast, and we just try to put as many like best practices around it, if that makes any sense. What are some of the best practices you found to be su uh, sustainable? Uh, consistency. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people are like jump into it, and like uh, a lot of people are jump into it like very ambitious with these big goals and these big desires. It may be some people may be looking for. Hollywood deal. Some people may be looking for some money out of it, whatever the case is. None of those things come without consistency. So I would say consistency is like number one. And just like pay attention to the details. So like if your audience is accustomed to a certain type of audio, like make sure your audio is always clean, you know? And like people, I've heard podcasts where it's like one day the audio is super clean. The next day I can only hear it out of the left ear. And it's like, yeah. man, y'all are getting lazy on the things that matters the most because if you have like the content is is they, they know what they're um they're coming to listen to but you got to provide like the best you got to give them the the um, um the best output that you possibly can like every single time mm -hmm. even if it's not um even if you don't think it's the best but like there's i mean there's there's been people that's come to us and like man this is that one show i'm like y'all like this show <laughs> for real <laughs> but you don't you know you don't know what people's palettes are so that's why I say like consistency man because you, you're like creating this framework where they're you're giving you're creating a sandbox that people can play in or you're creating this this palette that people can you know taste test from and will you in building it do you listen to audience feedback and you're like okay they like oh, more of this yeah, that's my job I have to okay yeah 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 so like uh, you know so I, when you think of 85 South Show like at least for me I think about it as like there's this big umbrella which is 85 South Media, right? And then we have like the Day in the Life stuff, and then we have the Studio Podcast, and then we have the Live Show, then we have the Variety Show, right? 
um, and I think we put out a couple of pieces of like cartoon pieces that we're partnering to work with, even from the merchandise side. So like, I'm always, always looking at these comments online. I'm always, um, I'm always like, even when we go to live shows, man. Like, I try to be the most unassuming person. Um, asking them what they think about the show, who they like, did they like this flow, did they like this cadence, all those things matter to me because, like, if the people don't like us, we don't really have too much. If they're not coming back, we don't really have too much. Yeah. Is that what you think has contributed to such big growth is listening yeah. to the audience? Yeah, it's way more, like, it's way more about the people. I can't tell you how many times, you know, we'll huddle after each show or after whatever project we're working on. And even from the talent side, like, man, what what could we have done better? And it, it never fails from a 200 seater to a, you know, 800 seater to, to <sighs> you three. You do 800 soda. seaters? Yeah. We just came back from New Orleans. Oh, the, house, the house, of house of blues. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> and then, uh, and it's like, it never fails. Like the talent, oh, it's about the people. As long as they can feel like we can touch them, it's cool. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we've done, man. We, we haven't, I say what we've done, like we're, um, it's not a competition thing, but I know what, for us specifically internally, it's been about it's been about like making sure that we're not untouchable, okay, or that we're not um, like we're everyday guys. We're not like Hollywood guys. That that make, I hate to say Hollywood guys, but you know, there's that like that that invisible line when you're dealing with some celebrities. We don't have that invisible line. So you guys will do meetings after every show. Oh yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. To like what you can improve on and all that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not, um, I'd hate to be, like, ignorant to what's going on or too high up, you know, like flying too high, you know, in that private jet where you're, like, 50,000, 40,000 feet up and you don't know what the ground looks like. Right, right, right. We try to fly, like, somewhere in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Hey, can you scoot in a little bit? I'm sorry, I just bro. Wanna get, no, Man, you're I'm, straight. I just wanted to get you in frame there. I'm being the worst, bro. I apologize. No, th we're, this is our first time here. Yeah. Like, uh, I've been working with Amon Garner. He's been my engineer since, no doubt. like, day That's one. That's important. Audio in engineer is very important. No doubt. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Must. It's an overlooked asset, for yeah, sure, yeah, in absolutely. podcasting. So, and now he's built out this studio at his place where he's hosting podcasts. This is dope. So, this is the first time we've been here. It's a nice setup, man. Yeah. It's a good setup. This is sick. So, yeah. we're, we're figuring out, like, the camera angle we wanted to do and all this. Right. So, I just want to make sure your your face. You said you like to be unassuming, so I want to make sure yeah, yeah. Chad's <laughs> face is in here. Right, right. No, I understand. So, uh, <laughs> have we started or was that, was that the intro or what? I don't know. Oh, yeah. We're here. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, cool, yeah. We cool. out just here, like, Chad. Just making sure. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Down, the, down. Drop the music. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's playing the 85 South. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Titties in the for building, sure. all uh, that. You're crazy. For yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, you say if you want water, that's your water. No right doubt, there. man. Appreciate yeah. it. This is our Fontas water. This is like our Red Bull of you guys. Uh -huh. You guys will have Red Bull. This is Fontas yeah. water. Yeah, we definitely they have Red Bull. Made us a uh, custom label. Educated so Escape. I like this. Local spring water. No doubt. Already. No doubt. Okay, cool. So we're cool. out here on different hustles, and that's that's why I've want, been wanting to sit down with you, and you told yeah. me you've been ducking me. Yeah, so I have. I apologize. <laughs> I kind of apologize, kind of don't, but yeah, I'm not really one for a whole bunch of interviews. So, so and that the fact you even agreed to this made me... Yeah, man. I like... Really um, I've listened it. to a bunch of your... Uh, I don't like to walk into anything blindfolded. Right, you know? right, right. So when you told me... And I've obviously been seeing it, but um, our guy that runs our social, we got two guys that kind of have a piece of it. And it was like, yeah, Chad, somebody wants to interview. I'm like, man, yeah, right. <laughs> Whatever. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm good, man. And then I kind of figured, you know, I, I checked it out. And I actually listened to a bunch of them on the road because I'm always interested in, like, information, you know. So, right. Um, one of my – you've done a, a bunch of really good ones. I really like the one with um, – what's my man, John from County Hype. Yeah. Pay attention to that one. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. There's another one you did. I can't think of who was on it. Was it – um. Obviously, listen to the Carlos and the Darren ones yeah. and the Clayton ones, but there was one more, and I was like, "Man, that was what's my man? You, I think you just did it uh, with the guy that produces specials for Rod uh, Rose. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. does the comedy specials. Yeah, I'm always interested yeah. in that, man. I, I want to, you know, it, it's it to be inspired and kind of know that we're kind of thinking in the same sort of capacity, you know. So yeah, dude, yeah. I'm, this this podcast is all about learning and educating. Yeah, for people sure, and, for sure. And I think, oh, n let me tell you, uh, there's another one. What's what's the DJ's name? Trauma. No, the one that was that runs with Tip. Um, what's my man's name? Who K I KP. Oh, Quan that Prather. one was dope. I'm a big fan Yo. of his. Like on the low, you know. No doubt, man. Um, so yeah, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of his. So that was super, super. And I like. Uh, I think you got something good, man. So I like how you uh, 
it's it's obviously it's it's the space is comedy because that's where you come from but mm -hmm. it's necessary to have i think you had a couple of designers on there that do branding and stuff like yep. that yep yep you have club owners um you have comedians you have Producers, all this stuff is is necessary, man. Because as much as as it is an art, it's definitely a business, and you got to find that balance. So it's necessary, especially in comedy. That's I personally don't think comedy's even been the business of comedy has not been figured out. Hmm. You know, I think it's like, I think there's a there's a again there's best practices because what's been taught or what's been done for so long. But I don't know that there's necessarily like. I don't think people, I, I shouldn't say that, figure it out. I, sh I should say that I don't think it's been exhausted. All the opportunities have been exhausted. Like, Kevin Hart is exhausting all opportunities. And then it's like, who else? Yeah. And you don't really think of too many other names, you know? But do you think depending on who you are depends on your, the opportunities you have in business or everybody has the same opportunities? That's a good question. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a black and white, like, definite answer. I think that if you are... <clears throat> any sort of person that wants to create for yourself in this space, you need to, um, if you don't understand strategy, you need to connect with somebody that does. Mm. If it's a partner or if it's just paying for that information. Um, because like everybody can't be Kevin Hart, obviously everybody can't be like the biggest guy, but I'm like, dude, if a comedian, let's say on the low end is getting anywhere from 500 to 1500 a show, and they're able to tour, you know, and do some, you know, X amount of dates a year, like, you're doing fine. You know, so then it becomes like, what are your goals? Are your goals to be able to feed your family? Then you're doing just fine. Are your goals to be like, you know, to use comedy to break into radio? Then you need to work toward what whatever that means and exhaust those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Are your goals to get on television? Well, these, these, uh, this comedic um, platform can open those doors for you, so... I think that, um, yeah, I, I, just, I think if you are a personality, you just need to make sure you're exhausting all your opportunities. But it's understanding where you want to end up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, Again, like, I'm not, <clears throat> there's nothing that any of us do as a collective, and then individually, because I work with all the guys individually in some capacity, but nothing that any of us do is on accident. Even if you make a mistake, you know, I think you can purposely make a mistake. Yeah, because I've heard... You guys have like a board at the studio with like all your different goals and things. Like, what's all on that board? Yeah, I wouldn't feel comfortable sharing that, but uh. <laughs> uh, we we um, yeah, man, it's 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 uh, yeah, we we definitely are trying to you know hit some attainable goals that mm -hmm. we've hit some and now we're shooting for a couple more. But I think being able to, you know, man, I don't um, I don't believe in like. As I've experienced more and kind of seen more and I guess been in different rooms and had a little, a, a little, a very little bit of access, um, I think that um, you, you, your world opens up a little bit more and, yeah. or your perspective, let me say, opens up a little more and you're like, oh, so it is that close, but it is that far. So let me work towards that. And then you just kind of chip that away back to consistency and you're like, oh, see, we got here faster than I thought we would. Or we're not doing this the right way, so uh -huh. let's let's redirect. You know that's happened too. So, so in like goal setting, what's a goal you guys made on day one that you've achieved? Uh, live shows, live shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the intent, I, I can't say this. Like podcasting was our goal wasn't just to be podcasters. I'm not even really comfortable saying like the podcast. Yeah, you know? it's show. Yeah, South it's, show, it's not a, South yeah, it's a, I mean it's a media company. You know. Oh, media company. Yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. you know we. And just to always keep it internal, man. It was always in. so. My hitch, my background is um, I used to work for uh, Steve Harvey. Yeah, where you guys started recording too. Yeah, in uh -huh. his studio. So I was, um, me and my partner Joe, who directs the show. We managed all of his his social, his digital. He, we worked our way up, obviously, but managed all his. At by the time we had left, his social, his digital, creative, anything you kind of saw come out online from a personal brand perspective. Mm -hmm. That was that was one of us. Whoa, for about okay. for about two years. Yeah. Um, and then prior to that, um, Joe's experience was working at Tyler Perry, and then mine was um, working for this this agency here um, in the city that does um, sports and entertainment and television and movies and all those sort of things. So, yeah, I mean, to be able to be in some of those rooms where you're able to see everything from conversations to um, budgets, what real budgets look like, right, 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 um, to 
um, even like how you manage travel, all that stuff matters. You know what I'm saying? And I've I've been able to between the both of us and then our audio guy, um, he's a board out for Steve. So I mean he's doing it at this the highest level. You know? He's what for Steve? He's the board operator for Steve. Oh. An audio engineer. Oh, okay. So he manages all that from like he's like, yo, this is what it looks like. This is what it's supposed and like wow. he's done it from the very top, you know. And he's doing it for eighty five. He does it for eighty five. So And that's another reason that shows testament to why you guys are where you are. Yeah, like I mean the people behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Like we you know, I, I it's important for us on our side, on the production side, to be able to match the talent. I never want to feel like Ooh. I never want to be in any business relationship because, and obviously when you're starting, you're trying to, you know, people have to give you an opportunity to open some doors for you. And we've definitely had those doors open for us. But as you as you get to a certain level, any business relationship you're in, if you want it to be an even exchange of talent, time, passion, um, and then payoff. Mm. You know, I don't ever want to feel like somebody's just doing me a favor. So I want any talent I work with to be like, yo, this dude's working and he knows what he's talking about. Or he's giving me the best he's got, you know? Right. That's important for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know how we got to this, but um, yeah, that's 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 kind of, you know. Well, it's a lot of this is just the context for oh, yeah, 85 yeah, yeah. South. For you know? sure, like, yeah. That's how we got there is like, oh, by the way, we came from working with Steve Harvey. We came yeah. from working with Tyler Perry. Yeah. And now we're building this media company, yeah. not by accident. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was extremely important for us to just... Be able to do something for ourselves. I'm still out of the shot. I'm sorry. No, you're good. No, it's, um, it's more just like the face. I'm just gonna move this. We're good. Yeah, that would be cool. See, we don't have a we don't have ten camera people. We don't have eight people. No, I have yeah. two. This is the uh, this is the hustle right here. But you guys started in the trap. You you know you went from Steve Harvey to the trap house. Yeah, you know I mean that was on purpose too. So <laughs> like perception, it's like yeah, the, gr- I mean, the come up. No, nah, I, I wouldn't say from there. I mean it was a little bit of um, it was a little bit of happenstance and a little bit of like, bro. Like listen, man, the <laughs> truth. This is the truth. Look, uh-huh. I'm not a genius. All right, Carlos, DC, Clayton, and Chico are the most talented people I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah, they're the wave. You can put those dudes underwater and they're going to be funny. <laughs> like, I'm not... You can put them dudes in a trash can and they're going to be funny. You can put them dudes in a Catholic church and they're going to be funny. hmm And they have a chemistry that, like, you can't create. I can't... You can't just put any piece together and make a puzzle work. Right. You know, and, like, Clayton and Carlos have known each other since... I've known them since I was 18 years old. And then DC and uh, Carlos were, like, Carlos was like the first person that DC kind of met in that comedy space from Atlanta. And then uh, Carlos and Chico got on Wild and Out together. So these are like, this is real chemistry that's been created, that's been built over time. So it's not like, I'm just this magician back here, man. No, like, but you, you got like the President's Award and <laughs> scholarship in college, right? Yeah. And all that. No, no, I really didn't, man. I, I went to school. Okay. I, I did go to school. I mean, you you know. Give yourself some credit there. You're yeah, smart. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I think I have common sense. Oh, uh, okay. That's what I think it is. And I don't think I'm smarter than like too many people, so I don't mind asking questions or trying to figure some stuff out or whatever, you know, whatever the case is. So. How did you meet Carlos and Clayton? So I was uh, 18 years old. And I was trying to get a summer job before I went to college because I played football in college. I had, you know, sports dreams. Right. Jacksonville University, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You done a little research. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit that's out there. I got you, Chad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went to school there. And uh, before I went to school, my girlfriend had a job. My ex ex girlfriend at the time, or girlfriend at the time, she had a job at a. Do you remember when they had the, the malls? The middle of the mall, they had the kiosk, and you would sell like AT and T plans. Mm-hmm. She had a job there, and I was like that dude that wanted to work with his girl because I just wanted to see her every day, right? So then we had to go do training for this AT and T. I couldn't even singular. I think it was called at the time. It was singular. Yeah, right. Yeah, I just yeah. showed my age. So <laughs> we're gonna go do that, man. I'm 18, 17, 18. I had to be eighteen, and um, Los was in the training, right? So this is Los what? at the time. Los has hair. Los has barely a beard like the little and this dude like I'm te- Los has never te- he's been Carlos since since I the day I met him mm-hmm. funny it was like a 40 person training um room or whatever 
and Los is just like got people crying, laughing in this room, dude. And I'm talking about not like, not like trying to be funny, dude. Just like everything he says. And I was like talking to him like he was a puppet, like, bro, make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, man, you crazy. And like Los is from Mississippi. I'm from New Orleans. So we already have like that country backwoods sort of connection. And then I'm like, man, I ain't going to never see this dude again. It turns out we're working both in the middle of the mall. I forgot what that mall is called in Kennesaw. Town Center Mall. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like, bro, nobody's walking in there, dude. It's a bunch of young people working in the middle of the mall. It's a bunch of dudes trying to get us some chicks. And then like me with my girlfriend. And then I see this big tall dude, and it's Clayton. And it's like me, Clayton, and Los are like trying to sell cell phones. I sold zero cell phones. <laughs> Clayton and Los sold a bunch of cell phones, and they were able to stop everybody. And I'm like, dude, you got, you, I, obviously, I don't know if a million people have had this job, but it's hard to get people to stop to buy a cell phone, much less you're the dude in the kiosk, so you got to extra validate yourself. Right. And these dudes are stopping. Everybody, bro, young, old, black, white, grandma, it don't matter, dude. Like, people with cell phones are really interested in what they got to say because it's so funny, dude. It's charm. They, they take over the room, man. Right. And I'm like, these dudes are crazy. But I just want to get a good laugh. So then it turns out, so then I go to school, Los has my number. And what's funny is Los kind of always took on that, like, big brother role because he came to, I think, he came to Atlanta just on a just on a whim, kind of. He just left Mississippi and came here. And then... um. So he would always call me, man, make sure I'm good, doing good, asking how school's going, trying to get some tickets. But I was always injured, so I wouldn't really get no playing time. And then he um What position? Receiver. I played some receiver, some running back. I but I was always hurt, bro. And then um, so I come back my so uh after my freshman summer, I wanted a summer job and I didn't want to do summer school. Or summer school hadn't started, so I needed a job for like a month. And he was working at Dick's sportswear. He was like, Man, I got you. He got me a job over there. I sold no shoes. <laughs> Low sold. Oh, I'm, I remember like, I remember like the most like rural white moms in Los is like got these women captivated. Like mm -hmm. buying all kind of Nike football cleats for their kids. I'm like, man, this dude's a genius, man. Like, and so we just always stayed in touch. So one day he calls me, man, maybe like a year later, bro, because Los is about five years old. And he calls it like a year later. He's like, yeah, I think I'm going to do comedy. I'm like, man, you been doing comedy. He's like, no, 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 like, like for real, for real. I'm like, let me know. Like, you got it, bro. However, I can help. I ain't got no money, but I'll help. You know, right, I'll right. tell people about you. And then next thing I knew, man, he did, um, was it Who's Got Jokes? Yeah, he did. I the, think. The then, yeah, that's jokes. the first time I saw him. And then he was on, um, what's that? Was it Hell Date? I remember he yeah, called. He's he like, Hell Date. He's like, yeah, man, me and Clayton got Hell Date. I'm like, what's, what's the Hell Date? And he was like, just watch BET. And there he was. <laughs> I'm like, man, that's Los, man. But he's Lose. doing it. Yeah, and we just... We, Quickly. Yeah, so every time I came back to Atlanta, man, he always made sure I, was, I got some free tickets and I was cool with my, whatever little girl I had. And I said, like, we've always been together. So, like, that was always my man first, you know, like my homie first. And then over the time, we were, I was working at the agency. It really wasn't too much. I was trying to get him a couple opportunities that kind of fell through just as a friend. And then when I was working for Steve, that's when we... Uh, my partner and I kind of took on our own sort of production thing. Like, man, we can do this, you know? Because I always wanted to wait till 30 to be an entrepreneur. But we're like 24, and my boy's like, dude, there's nothing that they know that we don't know. They just got more money. Mm -hmm. And they were born before us. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And I got fired from this job for asking for a raise. What job was it? I was working, the agency I was working at. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I asked for a raise and got fired like a week later because I went straight to the boss. <laughs> How'd you say it? Were you? I, well, I hate to say this but i was like i put, <laughs> i put this whole um i put this whole uh like you know like presentation together like a one sheet or whatever huh and i was like i don't want to take anybody's job i want to create my own job because this is when social media was trying to like people were trying to figure i mean still trying to figure it out this is like when it was a new thing and it was like uh nobody really knew how to define it or whatever but i'm like social media is necessary because obviously i'm one of the millennials that sees the wave or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I want to do this like coordinator slash social media sort of thing. And this is why, and this is what the average person is making. I don't want that much. I just want this much, a little bit more than I'm making. And he was like, have you talked to anybody about this? I took him out to lunch with my own little money. Whoa, the head boss. Yeah, like <laughs> the, the dude signing my checks. And I'm like, I'm like, you need this. This is why you need it. These are all the things that I've... 
that I've done since I've been here. I started off as an assistant. And I'm like, these are all the things that I've done since I've been. I've managed budgets. I've done client calls. I've done X, Y, Z. I've uh, saved a couple of accounts. So I just, I'm not asking for a raise. I'm just asking for a new position with a little more money. And he was like, whoa, have you talked to anybody about this? And I'm like, nah, why would I? And he was like, you didn't talk to your boss? I'm like, you know, why would I talk to anybody but you? You don't want to sign my check. He's like, man, just give me some time and I'll think about it. And I was like, all right. So the next day, my boss calls me in. She, you went and talked to yada yada without telling me? I'm like, you don't sign my checks? Not knowing that you're not supposed to, you know, chain and come in. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm just ambitious. Like, bro, I, you know, this is what I want. Yeah. And uh, she was like, all right, you, I'll show you. And like A week later, I got fired. So from there, I'm like, hey, Joe, uh, you know that thing you was talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do that, bro. I mean, I ain't got, I can only go up from here. He was like, all right. So we started, you know, creating for ourselves as far as photography, photography. I mean, photography, videography, a little bit of design. Is that the Austere 87? Auto, Auto 87. Auto, oh, yeah, Austere, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh -huh. and that just started off as like video content or whatever. Um, and we were starting to, you know, we saw that there was a space for like, even back, I say back then, I'm sure people still do it, but like there were brands that would go shoot things, they would do an event, and they would capture it to give it that extra sort of feel or right. whatever the case is, so you can feel like you were part of it or you missed out on something. And we saw that there was a space for that, so we kind of jumped on that based on the little relationships that we had. Mm -hmm. That parlayed into an opportunity to actually, before I was working for Steve, I was working for his business partner, um, Rashawn McDonald, who was Steve's business manager for about 25, 30 years. Yo. So I was his assistant. I'm sure you heard it. Yeah, yeah. I was his assistant. Whoa. Carrying his coffee, taking his car to get fixed, getting his mail, all the little things. But like, bro, when you're somebody's assistant, you hear so much, right? And you're talking about like, you know. Half a million dollar budgets, five million dollar budgets, ten. This is like he's doing this with his eyes closed, and I'm just like, I didn't even know if there was a world like this, you know. So I just kind of worked for him for a while. He promoted me to work for the company, and then just kept every time they asked, "Can you do something?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah." He's like, "You know anything about YouTube?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get on YouTube and learn about YouTube. Yeah. Can you build websites? Yeah, man. <laughs> Get on YouTube, learn to build. Google, learn to build a website. Yeah. You know. Hey, y'all know how to do photo shoots? Yeah, man. I'm looking up three-point lighting and all that stuff. Uh huh. That's how we kind of worked that way. So we did all that to eventually get to Lowe's when he was hosting uh, Cats all the time. And I, I, in my mind, Carlos was the funniest person in the world. But what I also learned was that, like, there's kind of like a brand presentation that you got to have for people. Not knowing that's what it was at the time. So we would go to Cats and just shoot, not even really knowing what to do with it. And just kind of putting it out. And, um, you know, years later, uh, a couple years later, or you hear people talking about his content. I'm like, content? You know, that's what we've been doing. Yeah. You know? You guys are almost ahead of the wave. Yeah. I, I, we were just doing it. I don't know if we were not even ahead. thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, we were just doing it. I don't know if we was ahead of the wave. So then uh, we're doing that, doing that, doing that. And then uh, we was like, dude, whatever we do has got to be involved with Carlos because this, number one, is my man. And then number two, this dude is like, the funniest person in time. Now, I haven't been everywhere, obviously, but I've been in a room with a couple of comedians at this point because now you're next to Rashawn, you're next to Steve. Like, you're meeting a lot of people. And it's not a competition thing. It's just like, dude, Los is, he's that funny, mm -hmm. you know? So we just, you know, we kept creating and kept creating. And then 85 came from, uh, it was actually supposed to be a uh, a radio show that we pitched. We wanted it to be like a Saturday, midday sort of thing, like, you know, cookout, barbershop sort of show. And like Los would be, it was going to be a 90s sort of thing with because the, the 90s music was making that comeback where they have the radio station, like 1029 and a couple of those stations. Yeah, yeah. And this is like, I'd read some articles saying that they were like popping up. Like, you no, know, Texas had a big wave that was making it happen, Atlanta. And there was one more state that was working. You did on the market it. research. Yeah, I, right. I Smart. guess so. Yeah. So we pitched it to Steve. And us not knowing any better, you gotta understand it. Like Steve is up here, so He's the top of the mountain. So you, for you to pitch some, it's gotta. He can't come down too far, you know. And yeah. not knowing no better, it's not a. You know, it wasn't a slight to us. It's just like it's gotta make sense, because as busy as he is, it's gotta make a lot. So we were like, no, no, you ain't got. To, you just EP it and name, walk us through the door, we'll do the work. And like, he's like, that's not a bad idea. So we kept trying, kept trying. 
And we just couldn't make it make sense. So finally, he was like, forget it. We'll do it ourselves. So we're emailing people, trying to figure out who's who at what radio station. Nobody would answer email, take our call. One guy took our call. I don't want to say his name. He was like, man, that ain't going to work. I, talk. Yeah. I was like, all right. I mean, I respect it. I understand. I'm not right. mad at that. I get it. Yeah. You got to make financial dollars make sense. We're coming from the art side of it. And uh, so no radio station would kind of pay attention to us. And then uh, we was like, man, well, why don't we, we thought about internet radio, not understanding that podcasting and internet radio are kind of two different things to a degree. And uh, we were like, well, what's a podcast? How do you do it? Like, how do you even upload, you know? So we were like, well, who else can we find that would like match with Lowe's? Because it's hard, like, Comedy is one thing in front of people. Comedy on airwaves is a whole nother thing because, like, you don't get the feedback for radio, like, until, like, a day later or with podcasting until you a week later sometimes. You know, you don't really understand how that feedback is looking. So on the flip side, when we were working for Steve, managing his digital, Joe reached out to DC's people, and we just wanted to work with him because this is right before he kind of took yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he was still doing the Ratchet People Meek thing. And he invited us out there, and we were like, dude, this dude is a genius, man. Like, I don't think people understand how funny and how, t that, forget fun, just talented. Like, people keep comparing him to Chris um, Tucker, and I'm like, nah, this is Jamie Foxx, bro. Yeah, I was thinking Jamie Foxx, like, too. Anybody, every bro, this is Jamie, like, this is Jamie Foxx. Yeah. And this is like, what, three years ago when I met Fly? Maybe three, four years ago. And I remember it was him, Nav Green, a couple of the guys, and I'm like, yo, all these dudes are like, they've got something, you know? So I don't want to take from that. I just want to know if you want to work on this, and this is how it can work for you. So, um, so I remember one day after the Ratchet People thing, we were like, uh, BT always invited Steve to everything. Well, every big media kind of outlet invites him. Obviously, I'm sure. So we would take those credentials and try to turn it into content because it's like, okay, if Steve's not going to go, let's go on behalf of Steve Hart Radio Network, and we'll just put it on his YouTube. You know, you do the music interviews or the festival interviews, whatever, whatever. So BT was doing uh, the Hip Hop Awards in Atlanta like they always do. And uh, they did the green carpet thing. And I'm like, well, Fly, why don't you go on behalf of Steve and be the correspondent? He was like, all right. And I'm like, okay, is that easy? He was like, yeah. What? <laughs> so he gave me his number. He's like, man, call me tomorrow. I was like, all right. Called him the next day. And he didn't pick up. So I'm like, man, I got the, you know. He called me back like Curve. two minutes later. Like, what's up, bro? My bad, I was asleep. Come pick me up. I'm like. All right, so I'm gonna meet you. He's like, no, pick me up. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Picked him up in the car, got in the car with his man. We went to the, and I think it's still on Steve's channel somewhere. But it's the, have you seen a YouTube video where he's like interviewing a bunch of people on the on the green carpet? Yeah. That's us. We produced that and, huh. and shot that. And uh our goal was to show it to Steve and be like, look, this is the next wave. Right. Put these boys under your umbrella. We got access to them because these are really our guys. It, it was Fly, Los, a couple other comedians. And again, you got to make it make sense. And I guess it just didn't make sense for him at the time. But it was like, we're going to keep working. The fact he even gave you time, though. Yeah, The fact yeah. you could be like, hey, Steve, I have an idea for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's no, unbelievable, yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Man. We don't even, we don't, we don't. And look, keep in mind, we're not the guys that's going to come to him with anything that we haven't vetted all the way through. Because okay. we we've seen those people that come to him. and Steve, I got this idea. But what they really mean is I need your money or I need your brain or I need your resources versus like, you know, meet me here and we can make this grow to a bigger thing. How do you thoroughly vet an idea? Uh, for, for Well, it depends on who you're dealing with, you know, because you got to think about what you're asking for. If you're thinking, if you're asking. For him, we never really asked for any finances. It was more about we just need that platform with them eyeballs. And it's got to make, and then second, if we need those eyeballs, how does it make sense for you? Cause okay. whatever you ask, like I believe in giving way before I ask. Boom. So, for him, it was like his return was, "All right, man. If we bring this to you, now you're the godfather of like the new wave of talent, and now you're always good, even when you walk away. So you're the guy to introduce DC, Carlos, Chico, Clayton, any whoever else we got access to." <laughs> That's not even a fun. That's like a legacy thing now. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's yeah. bigger than finances. So he was always interested, and in, you know, it's we still have a good relationship, but we, you still you got to make some stuff make sense, make more sense into the details, which I'm not really comfortable sharing. But so that's a that's a good note for like 
anybody who's wanting to pitch an idea to someone is first vet it and think about what is in it for them and answer yeah, those questions. Yeah, absolutely, bro. What is in it for the person man, you're pitching? Listen, absolutely. Like, cool. Because people come to us with stuff. And like, I know what it's like for somebody to turn you down a million, million times. So I hate, but I'm like, dude, you like you gotta like I'm nobody. You gotta understand when you come to these guys, these Will Packers, these Steve Harvey's, these Kevin Hart's, like you number one, understand you're in the room, right? And like you gotta understand these guys' schedule, man. Like, there are some people, and like this is just how capitalism works. There are some people that do not have any time to waste. Like your thirty minutes with them could have blew them a check because that they could have had they could have turned down a bunch of meetings that was as quick as let's sign a deal. Mm-hmm. So for you to even get that opportunity, like understand that, and it's not nothing to be nervous about, but just understand mm-hmm. that, like, make sure that you've thought about how they're going to win way before you're going to win. So if you thought about that for them, you can always back into you, how you win because sometimes the win is I'm just I'm next to you. There's a win in that. But, like, if you're dealing with these people who have done the work, who have gone through the process, who are 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 years into this, bro, they've seen it all, you know? So make sure that there's some payoff for them. Make sure they're not doing you a favor. So is that how the whole Diddy situation came to be? Man, um, that that was kind of crazy. That just came from um, just kind of doing the work. He can't, hey, I, I'd be lying if I mean, he came to us. We don't really, yeah, we don't really reach out to people, uh-huh. to be honest with you. Like, after the Steve thing, we took it on ourselves to be like, you know what, we just going to keep working. You know, because I, I I believe in, we believe in DC, Carlos, Chico, and Clayton that much. Y'all are going to be them guys in no time. No doubt. And I, when I say those guys, those guys that, like, the rest of the world has acknowledged us, though. We've already acknowledged them. Mm-hmm. So... We we kind of took on that mentality, like we'll just keep working, we'll be all right, you know. So, you were right. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, we're not even nothing. You know, we got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, we got, bro. I'm serious, man. This isn't like uh, you know, we got a long way to go, bro. So I'm not. We're still working by by all intents and purposes. So how does P Diddy reach out to you? Is this like a Man, DM? Listen, what, no, what listen, bro. Here? Somebody like Puff Daddy, you know, it takes two phone calls. He can get to you. He didn't get, you know. He, but yeah, I mean, but you get a call and you're like, oh, it's P Diddy. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. No, he called, uh, he actually called Fly. And then Fly called me and I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> 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 but you, you got to understand, like, a bunch of people get at Fly for, like, the craziest stuff. We're just not really, like, vocal about it. You know, so he reached out to him. And then, um, but it's the thing, like, we, you know, again, like, it's a... It's a big deal for me personally to be able to sit at the table versus somebody doing me a favor at this point in like business. So I it was it was a mutual thing, you know. And it's like, you know, even if nothing comes of that, bro, it's like we're on the radar, you know, and that means something. So yeah, that was cool. That was super cool. Like, listen, man, I'm the anybody that knows me personally. I'll tell like Puff Daddy told me how to dance, bro. So like, oh, you go way back with dude. Like, like I, man, I like bro. Listen, coming up, man, yeah. like being a kid and watching MTV jams, like the real MTV jams before you go to school, <laughs> and just seeing Puff and Mace and like Master P and like all them dudes from back then. That, that's like that was crazy kind of seeing them. But you gotta, you know, you gotta be professional, man. You gotta put that professional side on, like. You gotta act like he's just another person. You played it cool. I have to, bro. Yeah, I have to. I mean, all of us did. And look, he's a human when it's all said and done. But now like, you're talking about a dude that's like about to be a billionaire on his own. So wait, he just, he just wanted to he just wanted to meet you guys and get a photo. What like why would he reach out and use his valuable time? He's one of those people, right. like you said. Yeah. Well, um, I think it, you know I've also learned too when you kind of get in these spaces, a guy like himself who's really smart with what he connects himself with, I think that was, you know, just kind of getting a feel for everybody. And, you know, just seeing what's going on. Because it's one thing to see it on, you know, on social media or on, um, online or whatever. And it's another thing to be like, oh, okay, so he, these, this, is, this is the human behind it. Gotcha. I think that's important, too. So you get you mean you're, you're in his office? Like did he fly yeah, yeah. you out to just come? Well, we say were, what's we up? were already gonna be in LA. 
Okay. So we just had to make it make sense for everybody because it was supposed to happen probably months ahead. But again, the blessing with 85 is created opportunities for like kind of all of us. Mm -hmm. So we're not, you know, we're all of us a lot more, especially like Los and Fly and Chico and those guys. But I think one time me and Joe were doing this project we were working on with, um, with Shaq. And then there was um, Los was on the road another time. DC was doing TRL. So we just had to make it make sense for everybody. That's all. Yeah. So is Revolt coming up? Is that the move? Uh, I don't know. You don't know. Mm. Just hanging out. Just yeah, chilling. We just we gonna we gonna try to figure something out. I don't know. That's what's so dope about podcasting is like have you heard of Atlanta Monster? Uh -uh. It's a podcast it's one of those crime drama podcasts. I have heard of it. But it, it went like super viral. It was like number one. That's it, it goes crazy, month. right? I have a friend they do like um they were I don't want to say like Netflix, but it's like a like it's episodic, they do right? Episodic, yeah. yeah. Atlanta Monsters, like season two, I think. Yeah, my boy in LA is crazy about that. I know you're talking about. I just went to a uh, a talk they did at Switchyards here in Atlanta. Switchyards, yeah, yeah. And they were talking about how they develop podcasts now right. with TV in mind. That's dope. Yeah, That's how they um, develop them. Uh, loudspeaker Network try that. Yeah, with, you guys uh, are on Loudspeaker, right? Uh, we're not on. We have a partnership with them. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a, we have a, <laughs> we have a okay. partnership. With them. Yeah, we have a relationship with them. But um, they're con they're they're connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. got a good relationship with them. Um, what you call it? Um, loudspeaker was trying that with uh, um, um, the guy Chris Morrow, who is a producer over there, and then um, Combat Jack, rest in peace. Right. They were um producing um these almost docu style audio pieces, mm -hmm. telling. But what they would do is um, uh, man, I can't think of the guy's name. He passed. He was an executive. A big record executive, but uh, they were doing um, like a docu style leading up to like his his work, and but they would take like a Fat Joe who's worked with him, so that's his episode. And whoever else has worked with him, and it'd be like a an eight episode series that was kind of dope. I don't know how well it did, but are you trying to do that with eighty five? Is long term transition to TV? I just I just content, just create content. Yeah, so I mean. I think there's tr the traditional mythology is like there's television and there's radio. But the internet has opened up so much because here's the thing that we pitched to um, Steve a while back. I remember watching, um, what's his name? Jerry Seinfeld changed the game in my mind. Yes. And I don't think, I think people are just now catching up to that. But I remember watching uh, he, uh, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, mm -hmm. right? And I, it's crazy seeing that come out. Because he put that out and like at the very same time I remember being in Chicago with with Mr. H and it was me and um his crew and our my mom and Joe. And we're like, yo, you are like the coolest dude on earth for black people. You touch a certain type of demographic that everybody will listen to what you have to say because you're like the OG and you're still relevant to like that forty year old and up audience. I'm talking to you? Well, this is us talking to him. Talking to who? Talking to Steve. Oh, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I said Mr. H. Mr. I'm H. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah I was Steve. like, wait. Yeah, yeah. I'm fault. not on Mr. H terms. My fault. Steve. I know Steve yeah, Harvey. Yeah, yeah. Mr. And Harvey. We're like, dude, how dope would it be if you're like in the room because he loves cigars? You going to all your favorite cigar spots in whatever city and you're interviewing and just kicking it with like your guys. And like we say that, and like two months later, comedian and cars, King Carver comes out. And I'm like, yo. I know I'm not stupid. <laughs> no. Yeah. So like, obviously, we didn't know at the time. We're just kicking cool ideas. Like he loved it. We just, I don't know what that budget is. Like at that time, right. I don't know what that cost to do that. Mm -hmm. This is just, you know, us in the room. Now this isn't pitch room. This is like just kicking it room with Mr. H. Right. Like chill, hang with Mr. Cooper. Well, He's he was hanging just, out. Man, there were some days he would just have us come around. You know, just for experience and exposure. And you, you know, you, you that's a blessing. So. He's like, man, what do you think about some content idea? And I was like, well, I got this one idea. That those are always encouraging though. Like I've had jokes I've like started to develop, and then I'll see them on like Daily Show or something. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. It shows you're at least you're yeah. thinking on the right track. Yeah. You know? Well, look, look, man. I think the thing about ideas is like some people believe that you should hold on to your ideas until it's the perfect time, and I understand that thought process because I used to think that way. But I believe that like you. People talk about you get your ideas stolen or jokes stolen or whatever. Like, I understand that. But I personally believe that, like, I look at it like putting up shots. Mm. And, like, something's going to fall. 
and you become a better shooter with the more shots you put up. Cause I've there's ideas that I know for a fact that like that's my idea, bro. That you've seen out there. Yeah, that I've seen like executed. And yeah. I'm like, come on, man. You know, it's like, yeah. but it but it doesn't bother me, man. Like it doesn't, it's not like I feel like I've been blessed with that, you know, with that gift. Even from the strategy side, are you from afar it looks like, okay, these dudes are just churning out a bunch of content all right. the time. But right. how how calculated is it? Is it like, okay, on this day, I'm releasing um, a photo. On this day, we're releasing a YouTube video at noon. Like, yeah, is that- um, the calculation is more just like the consistency. Okay. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, the, uh, the the thing died. You need a reset? I might, yeah. Yeah, sorry, bro, I'm cool. We just I'm got sorry. a couple more minutes here. Bro, I got, I actually, am the, this is the freest day you caught me. That's why I couldn't run from you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm actually free all day, bro. I just got to work out at 6.30. That's it. Run from it. Yeah. yeah I, I hope I don't sound like an idiot on here, man. Why is everybody... No, you're still on, by the way. You oh, man. Saying that. No, bro. <laughs> no, man. I love when people get on here and they're so self-conscious, especially it's people that like don't normally... Yeah, man, interviews ain't really what I do. They're just like, oh, man, I'm dumb. I don't really... This will probably be the last interview for like, for like 10 years, bro. You think so? Yeah, I'm good on interviews, man. Well, what what made you um what made you no, they, the hot breath? They kept telling me to do it. Eighty five did? It's like, come on, bro, go do it. I'm like, nah, you know I gotta do it, man. man just go do it. Nah, you know I gotta. So they see us out here. No, it's, it's we just out like, here. man, it's like, you know, um interviews are good things. I'm just like, cool. I don't think I'm like the best um orator, you know what I'm saying? You're doing great, buddy. Thanks. I appreciate, I appreciate the encouragement. You're doing encouragement. great. Mr. Mr. C. I'm just going to start. Nah, no, nah, you ain't got to do that. I'm not even comfortable with Mr. <laughs> anything. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Appreciate that. But even with it, with a uh, hot breath, I'm, yeah. I've been really leaning into lately, like the content side and trying to find yeah. new ways to generate as much content Dude, as possible. Dude, I think, listen, man, I think you have something. Like, I'm, I wouldn't just say it to say that because I've listened to a couple of good podcasts. Uh, uh-huh. couple well, the ones that I've taken the time to listen to. But, bro, I, listen, honestly, hot breath, I'm going to be honest with you. Hot breath is what I wanted 85 to be. And they were like, hell no. Nah. Like, I wanted it to be what? like the rap radar <laughs> for comedy, you know? What? Because I'm like, I'm the guy that, bro, listen, I remember being like m- somewhere through college when like YouTube was a, was really blowing up. Mm-hmm. And dude, I've watched Jamie Foxx interview. Like, it's, you know, like I'm that guy that'll watch all those Denzel um, interviews, you know, watch those Chappelle interviews. Like, that stuff is crazy. Me with Puff talking about how him and Big, man, like I was, I love that stuff, man. So when I was like, man, we need to interview comedians. We need to have Dion Cole. We need to have Steve and ask him those stories from the night. And I'm like, man, that's corny. <laughs> <laughs> that's and I was corny. like, all right, I guess you're right. You know, yeah. but it's like that, us not knowing, you know, me not even understanding the full breadth of like what we had, but. Yo. What you're doing is a space for it, dude. Like, there's a, there's a real space for it, and I think you're doing it right. Cause like, it, what's tough is like, it doesn't matter how awesome Atlanta is. Cause I really believe in Atlanta. We don't have that uh, foundation that like New York has or that LA has. Like, we're getting it. And I know people say all the time, Atlanta's gonna be it. But what that really means is like, in ten years, maybe. Mm-hmm. In 15 years, man, you gotta understand, like, LA's been doing this. And there's a reason you have to go to LA to do a lot of things. There's a reason you have to go to New York to do a lot of things. Even Chicago. So, like, what's your, like, if you if you were doing what you're doing in New York or LA, the, I think the eyeballs would be a little bit bigger than, mm. or the perception. Let me say that. I shouldn't say eyeballs because I don't know what your number, but the perception. Yeah. Because, like, you know, podcasting is what it is when it's all said and done and you can kind of play with it and tinker with it to a degree. But like at the very like traditional sense of podcasting, like you're not doing nothing that anybody in New York or LA isn't doing, you know? Um, what's that? I listen to How I Built This all the time. I love that, yeah. That's exactly what this is. Right. From a, an Atlanta perspective. I shouldn't say Atlanta, but like a regional perspective and like a uh, with the comedic sort of foundation. Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's as dope. Comedy. If you ask me, audio sounds just as good. Presentation is just as good. You know? So. So what would, what would you do to... Because I, f- I feel like, you know, I've done over 130 now. And right. I feel like 
I found my system as far as creating episodes right. and turning them out weekly and generating guests. But yeah. the the eyeballs, man, the yeah. exposure. What's yeah. the strategy there? Have you figured out who your audience is? I think it's comedians, younger younger comedians looking to learn about comedy and how they can get better at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I so. I can I can give you our perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm pretty familiar with our audience at this point, so we don't like really kind of leave our base. So like, when you're thinking about your audience and how to grow it, um, number one, I think you're doing a lot of the right thing. I don't. I, I wish I had a big secret for you. Mm-hmm. The consistency is like the secret. Your next step may be opening you up to a little bit um, guests that may have like bigger visibility because I think your content is really, really good, like in all seriousness. So it may be like a guest situation for you where it's like there's that one guest that kind of blew me up because I know you got that NPR, like you got the love from NPR. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing, it's the content is there. It's just patience, I guess, and consistency. Patience, man. And then like, you know, it may be that one guest if like a, Mr. H. Yeah, right. <laughs> if that Dion Cole comes in or whoever the case is, that can mm-hmm. kind of like break yeah. it open. Because you don't know when like the quote unquote break comes. Like I remember when like I was like, oh shoot, people are listening to it. What was that moment? Um, I want to say when we did a, we did an episode. We did this episode with, uh, what's his name? It was with Nav. It was with DC. No, that wasn't an episode. It was with DC, Los, and uh, B. Simone. That's what it was. And I don't know what she did. That was, I think she had just hit that kind of viral thing right at the right time. Like, I didn't even know who she was at the time, to be honest with you. I was like, oh, you're the girl that did whatever, whatever. Because Los and DC are connected to it. They brought her in. And then, like, we hit at the right time. She did the interview, and that, like, took off on YouTube. I was like, man, can people all kind of listen to it? Kind of. Mm-hmm. And then we just, then I think um, Nav came, not either Nav or Emmanuel Hudson came on next. And then we were like, okay, we got to, you know, find a little bit of consistency in how we're pushing this out. And then we kind of, kind of, I don't want to say took off, but that's when I was like, okay, I think, I think we're turning the corner. And then when we got to start doing those trap episodes and we got away from, we we started focusing again on like, the content and less about the guests and making it more about getting better with DC and Carlos. Mm-hmm. Cause I got a, I, for one point I was trying to keep getting guests at the guests. And I was like, man, this show doesn't depend on guests. Like we don't, these guys themselves can be funny for hours on hours, as long as they got the win for it. So once we kind of focus on that and incorporating, like we got a little bit better with like some of our segment, I say segments, but loosely with our segments as far as um, like some topical things. Cause that helps online. Um, what do you mean, like just giving people direction, or? Yeah, well, I say I'm, I mean like topical as far as like, say Trump did something crazy, gotcha, making gotcha. sure they talk about it, or, you know. So with all that online stuff, are you guys strategic down to even how you word the titles and maybe even the the tags of the videos and like that SEO approach? Yeah, we have experience in SEO. You guys get into all that. What are some tips on that? Uh, <laughs> what do you own the internet? You no, can't give away an nah, SEO tip. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Um, You're looking at me like I'm asking for the sauce. No, no, no. Well, yeah, I can't give away the sauce, bro. <laughs> I was told not to give away the sauce. <laughs> Go do the interview, but don't tell him anything. Don't give away the sauce. <laughs> nah. Um, look, I'm not the genius SEO dude. Like our technical guys do that. Um, but I know that they that's what they do. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, they they focus on like a lot of that technical SEO. Keyword search and all that stuff. And I definitely know it helps. Yeah. You don't know anything about it, though. Not as much as I should. For now. Yeah. These are the launch codes. You can't even, <laughs> it's like giving away the launch no, code. No, I don't, you know. Well, the, what? For like a, for, let's just say for like Hot Breath in general or a comedian trying to build a brand. Right. Your brand is on point. Like every, it's just every detail is accounted for. What are some tips for somebody who's like, well, why isn't, why am I not getting more successful? What kind of tips do you have that maybe big mistakes you guys made that we could learn from? Man, 
I would say, uh, I would say if you're looking externally, you're probably making, that's probably the first mistake you're making. Trying to figure out what everybody else is doing. Mm. I was like, look internally. And then if you're going to look at what somebody else is doing, it's like, if you're trying to draw some inspiration, I understand that. But as far as like, trying to figure out what somebody else is doing, like, I'm probably not even wording that right. I would say look internally. That's what we've done. We don't really, I don't really know what too many other people are doing other than like what we're doing. Hmm. Cause I can tell you all the mistakes that we've made. And then I can I can tell you how we got better with that. From how we put out I mean, even little stuff like making sure your audio is recorded all the way through. You know, how to travel and how to do merchandise, how to make sure your website is clean, clickable, and it looks good on the desktop and it looks good on the phone and the iPad, like, you know, all that stuff. You know, we have a little bit of experience and all that. Uh, so I would look internally first, man, and then again figure out like what you're trying to do. Some people are trying to make some money. Okay, how do you go get um, some advertising dollars? You can do that independently, which we've done. You can go partner with some advertising networks. Loudspeaker does it. Audio Boom does it. Uh, there's a couple other ones. Advertisecast does it. Look up, look at, look into those opportunities. Um, looking into building some numbers. Facebook has some algorithms. Twitter has some, I mean, uh, IG has some algorithms you can figure out. Um, and then kind of go from there, man. Honestly, podcasting is like not an easy thing. Yeah, it's I a wish, lot of work, dude. I wish it was, man. I wish I could be like, bro, this is as easy as this, but it's not. So that's why I say like, <clears throat> you um, you need to know to a degree what you want to do when you're doing this. We knew exactly what we wanted to do when we created it. It wasn't just about podcasting for us. So even... I will say this, for the first, like, I don't think we saw a dollar for, like, the first eight months. But we was okay. That wasn't our goal. So, you know, our goal was to do what we were doing at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, and making sense of it. How did you figure out those algorithms? <laughs> oh, man, just a lot of... But look, I got we got some real nerds in our teams, too, bro. Word. Like, you know, I wish it was as simple as, like, man, we're just these genius. Like, bro, we'll be up all night trying to do this stuff. You know? Right. Like, I mean, Los will be sending us links and articles. Like, this is, it's important for me that all of us are pretty educated on both sides. Like, I'm asking them, you know, on their side, like, yo, do you, does the wide stage feel good? Is the stage too deep? Is the audience, like, you know, what kind of spaces do you like to be in? So I can understand from your perspective and they can understand. When we're explaining to them, you know, apparel and merchandise and how to cut some commercials and all that stuff on our side and why you're doing everything, we make sure we talk everything through. But when you talk about algorithms, man, that's something that's like... There's nothing that Google or YouTube can't teach you. And then you got to find it for yourself. Mm -hmm. I said, when I say find it for yourself, that's not like, a, I mean, like, what works for you? Because what works for us may not work for you. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, we're like, but we're real, like, we're nerds, bro. Like, we just, I don't really do too much, bro. I don't really do too much other than, like, I'm, like, obsessed with work, bro. So. And this is your full-time? Full-time gig? Well, we f work for ourselves full-time. Yeah. yeah. So, like. 85 takes a lot of time, obviously, to keep that machine running. But what me and my partner do is um, we have a production company, or I call it a content company, uh, called Authority 7. So we've created for Steve. We've created for Red Bull. We've created for Shaq. Um, we've created for um, um, the 100 Black Men of Atlanta, um, a couple other brands, Cox. You know, so we do content Jeez. for them sometimes. Yeah, And I... As I talk this out, maybe I should tell more people that, but yeah. <laughs> it's on your website though. Yeah, yeah. It's I don't even advertise the site. I need to update it, man. And then we work personally with, you know, personal brands as far as comedians. So like Chico, um, we're putting his site together. Um, Darren, we've built his site. I love Darren, by the way. He's great. That guy's a hustler, man. Yeah. He sure. thinks like an entrepreneur. Um Billy Sorrells, that's my man. Yeah, he's been on here too. That's my man. Wow. Um who else do we build for? Um, Joe Byers We can white people no, man. We Where can the white folk at I have no problem with white people I love black people though <laughs> yeah. um, I understand yeah, it's, it's not our time Yeah no <laughs> <laughs> Crazy uh, Who else man So we You know we built uh, We work with Global Soul uh, oh, yeah, The, the sneaker guys yeah. yeah we built their website Um, So You know we do that On our time On our spare time And then What I'm really trying to get into Is like Designing more apparel And stuff like that For people that's like 
that's like my little fun thing. So yeah, the eighty five South logo is insane, man. Man, we're actually we're redoing it. What? Yeah. So it's funny that I appreciate you liking all this stuff, but I actually like hate everything that we do. Because <laughs> it's not working, right? No, it's just like I don't know, man. It's, I'm always like, man, it could be a little bit better. I'm probably getting on all our guys' nerves with that. I'm like, man, that show is cool, but we missed a couple things. It could always be better, right? Yeah. yeah but at some point, you just gotta. Yeah. We did it. Yeah, man. We used to. Um, yeah, yeah. So we work with comedy hype. We done some work with comedy hype too. Mm-hmm. So. So yeah, so like you know, that's full. Time. I don't have a job. That's what you're asking. Like I don't clock in anywhere. So like we clock into ourselves. Yeah. Um, and then we, you know, we working on some personal stuff with Los. Um, we've already directed and produced a special for um, Chico and Brand. We kind of like tag team that. Um, and yeah. Does branding require that internal approach? Like if somebody's trying yeah, to yeah, man. It. Let me say it. One thing yeah. that does excite me is like brand approach and strategy. That's okay. like, I love that stuff. Well, let's get into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what, what was your question? Well, just you mentioned that com- people should look inward instead of outward. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like, like, same thing with a brand and building. Yeah, that bro. Because like, man, like Carlos is not DC, right? And DC's not Darren, and Darren's not Clayton. And none of them are 85 South show individually. And at all, like, there's, cl- uh, to me, there's clear separation and a little bit of overlap. But I always look internal, man, because authenticity is what's going to help you last and not age. And mm. You're going to make it through the times when it matters. So, like, nothing matters more to me than authenticity. Like, even when I was working for Steve, you know, when you're at the level that he's at, there's a lot of brands that are, connected with you so you gotta be very PC about a lot of stuff but I think if you can kind of dig on his YouTube page you'll see like a lot of the cool stuff that came out came from us and we wanted to make it relatable man like palatable and like yo this dude is dope yeah yes you are getting off of a private plane but that's okay cause you work for it and uh yeah you are sur- uh, smoking a cigar but that's what you do in your, in your pastime or your you know downtime and, like, we had a... He wanted to do this blog site at one time. We built this whole blog site for him. Um, and just... That site was at one point... I think it was up for, like, a year or two. It was doing, like, two million visits a month at one point. Yeah. It was crazy, man. We was doing it, bro. So even in brand identity... Yeah. How how in-depth, like... With the branding, I've heard you need to, like... Almost create, like, an avatar of who is your target... Yeah, I mean, that. I hear that, man. Look, that's a uh, really good industry talk, and I'm not mad at it. It's necessary when you're in those rooms because I've had those conversations. But I mean, it's like I like to say that I like to consider myself like a, a creator first and like an entrepreneur second. Mm-hmm. So I always try to put the art ahead of the business. And some stuff just kind of. I mean, I was talking about like best practices. Like there's the stuff that feels right, and then within that feel right of that art. Let's make sure it aligns with some best practices or get as close as we can so you don't lose. So, you know. Okay. So, yeah, you, you can do all those things, bro, you know, and target audience and um, and then you break down your audience into demographics, you know. Right, right. You can do all that, and that's cool, and that's necessary because you don't want to take shots in the dark. But some stuff, like, if it don't connect and it just don't connect, none of that stuff matters. And I think that connection comes through like that sixth sense. Your like your personal instinct. Yeah, uh, yeah. taste is the word. Taste. Yeah. Okay. Taste is the word that I like to use. All right. Cool. Yeah. So like. Yeah, because you, you guys expanded the brand into like merchandising, which you know, I mean, I've 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 had the shirts at one time, yeah. and like this water here, but like none of it's that shirt really is taken dope, off. man. Uh, it, it's a good print, and oh, it looks like a like a seventies sort of eighties sort of thing. Oh, cool. And then uh, nobody really bought it, but that's, that's okay. Cool. That's okay though. <laughs> it's, it's a good. Uh, that looks like something you find over in Criminal Records. So that's dope. Word. Yeah. Oh, so it's just it's not timely yet. It'll it'll get its time. Yeah. Listen, bro. Listen. Ferment. There's some of our merchandise that I knew was gonna be a hit, and I'm like, am I the only one that likes this? Wait, this what was that? Bro, we did this. Um, we did this uh, t-shirt, this Outcast t-shirt rendition with like DC. I think I. Bro. Was it for the tour? No, we did it no. for uh, we did it for uh, we did it like last year, and it was like the Stank on your album. Mm-hmm. And DC was uh, Andre three thousand, 
and Carlos was big boy. And like, we put it online and like nobody bought it. Did you make it? Did you design it? So well, I don't have the time to sit there and gotcha. design like I used to, like get an illustrator. And I'm not the best designer, I'm be honest with you. So we have a guy that we partner with. And this dude is like, I'm like, bro, this is the inspiration. These are, this is the palette that I'm looking at, the colors that I want. This is what I wanted to print on, but this is what I needed to look like. And we'll go through a couple of renditions, a couple of edits. That's it. Let's do it. But nobody bought that one. The the Outcast one? Yeah. No. Nah. I'm like, bro, I put the custom tags on it, bro. I put the joints <laughs> in the back. I'm like, the packaging was dope. I'm like, this is hard, bro. And it was like, I guess the artists weren't feeling it, but they love that freaking Braves one, man. That And that's what I've heard is sometimes, and even with like musicians, it's like the hit song was the one they didn't, like wasn't the one they thought was going to be a hit, flopped, but Whoa. the one they just threw out there is the one that hit. Yeah, and like that's the that's the business side of it. Yeah. The art in me is like, man, that was all right, but the people love it, so I'm never going to, it ain't about me, you know. You just listen to the people. That's Yeah, man, I will say this one we just did, the House of Blues one, mm -hmm. I love that one. That's like the cause I when I try to create apparel, I try to do peak. Cause I remember, man, like, you know, there's a vintage shop right there in East Atlanta, the um, the versus place. And um, you walk in there and like, there's some t I remember I bought like a uh I got from them like a little Kings of Comedy t shirt that they had from like years ago. Obviously, when I'm a child, bought it for like 15 bucks. And I brought it to Steve. I'm like, yo, I, this is yours, man. Wow. Right. He was like, man, this is dope. Where'd you find this? And I told him. And like, I want our shirts to feel like that when people, because you can remember that moment, you know? Mm -hmm. So when we design, or when I design, I try to I try to create stuff like that, that feels like that. And like, you know, that's what the Outcast one felt like. At least it, it wasn't a hit, it felt right, like. Right. <laughs> but the House of Blues one feels like that. Because uh -huh. they had a whole thing where they called it like a bootleg tee because we didn't get actually approval for that t-shirt until like... Eight minutes before the show started. Wow. Had to run it up the ladder, illegal and all that stuff. But which gives it more like a little story. So, Of course, man. Yeah. And I appreciate Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I, I think about like our goal, man, is like, I shouldn't say our goal, but we're working like in the same mantra as like Master P. We're just doing comedy or um, like, like rap a lot records. Like they were independent, you know, they did it on their own and they put up their own money and lost some of their own money, but they're in full control of what they're doing. Yeah. Where it's all about partnerships and we're not waiting for any, you know, waiting for anybody else. So that's our mentality, bro. So when you when you set these goals, just to wrap it up here and looking at maybe what your goals are now in will you like you said after shows, you guys will huddle up, mm -hmm. talk about what went well, what didn't, what yeah, can yeah. be improved on. Do you do you guys have monthly like audits where you're like, okay, we have this goal to achieve in what six months? Do you like audit uh, that way? Like the structure. Yeah, they're of it. not timetable ones. It's more so like, for instance, like I wanted to put I will say this goal was to put like a 10 city tour together mm -hmm. that we booked on our own, produced on our own, travel on our own, and we're we we we've, we've I think we got one more city we're about to announce, or two more cities about and that'll be it. That like in the play. That's a goal. Um, cause then what you do is the biggest strategy is you take that and you're like, hey, whoever, we've done it ourselves. Look what we've done. So let's do this for real. Mm. You know? Yeah. So that's how we put, like, you know, the, the small fish is for the bigger fish. We put goals together. So even with apparel, it's like, hey, we want to move X amount of pieces by X amount of days so that we can say, hey, whoever. Look what we've done. Gotcha. So you do set a deadline for like, let's say we want to sell a hundred shirts in the first month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the deadline is more about um, being able to. I say deadline, but like that's in within the time frame of like a tour or something like that that we're doing. But it's more of like we but even showing like, other people. Like, oh yeah, this yeah, is yeah. our value. But even like provide. subscription goals, like we wanted to uh -huh. hit. We wanted to hit a quarter million. At, I think we hit it right in time, like in like a. a couple months or years or whatever when we realized where we were right 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 i said a quarter of a hundred thousand it was like well shoot okay well we're pacing at this let's try to get a hundred by this and then you see hey all of a sudden come subscribe come subscribe and that becomes like like a thing for us but i mean it's yeah i mean we're not doing too much it's not nothing's like falling out of the sky it's all strategic you're looking at analytics yeah. and everything yeah i mean some stuff i mean look when you got guys like carlos in dc Right. That is your talent. Some stuff they're going to do and you got to catch up to it. 
That's yeah. the truth too. Or just have the have the camera pointed at them when it yeah, happens. like some stuff they do, you're like, oh, okay, we got to scramble to put it together, you know. But there's not too much. Like there's a real framework and foundation. Like Los and DC aren't oblivious to what we're doing, mm. and vice versa. I, I I'm not even comfortable in a relationship like that. So I've been around where the talent doesn't know what's going on. They're just being funny or just being talented. But having, I think that having that connection and that investment into the whole project yeah. creates that authenticity. And there's a trust. 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 There's a level of trust that comes that, yeah. like, trust is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. You know, because your decision-making changes when you can trust somebody. Totally. You know, you know so I think that's a, that helps, too. There's a comfort there that you can just, he's got it, and I can do my thing. And there's trust and then peace. Let me say that. Peace. Yeah, peace comes from, like, I can trust that person. I'm glad you trusted me to do one of your <laughs> interviews, man. Nah, this is cool, man. You, know, you uh you looked at hot breath, like you wanted eighty five South to be that. No, nah, man. But it look, is, look, but I think it worked out for you though. We're doing all right, bro. <laughs> doing, but nah, what you're doing is dope, man. I would continue to do it if I was you, bro. Like, you oh, know, I'm not I mean, know. I'm I'm in. Yeah. I'm not yeah. quitting. I'm just looking I mean, to maximize the output. Bro, now. it may mess around and be something where, you know, you and then, like, and then if you just, like, you know, say you're expanding outside of, par- say you partnered with, um, say you became, like, the official interviewer for, the, what's that comedy festival they do down here? Yeah, Laughing Skull. The Laughing Skull. You right. know, you could partner with them and do something. There's your, there's the reach. It may not be the interview. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or if you partner, what's that local um, outlet here? Um, Creative Loafing. You right. Know? Yeah, I've I've connected with yeah, them. Like yeah, like partner with, talks. they've got a reach, Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and you touch, like, that audience that's palatable what it makes the most sense so and then like i don't know man like all them festivals why wouldn't you pull up to those festivals and get those interviews just become part of the media like you can frame it how you need to frame it boom that's where you get that access that joel byers may not get by himself which is fine just understanding where you are but if you become media and get your media outlet for whatever festival comes through here you know atlanta has x amount of festivals why wouldn't you do that that's what I was asking earlier, man. The strategy. What do I do? Yeah, I mean, here, I had, 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 you put me on the spot. I think about it for a second. Well, I'm, I'm glad that came around. But yeah, that's gold. and then like, bro, that T-shirt is dope. I think you have a website. I think I've been to it. I have a website. Bar. The podcast doesn't have like its own website, but I have a website. Joe Byers, yeah, 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 for I have sure. JoeByersComedy.com. Yeah. yeah, man. And then yeah. like, um, I mean, you run your social well, bro. You do. I think, I think what you got to do. I listen to it. I don't listen to everything, to be honest with you. Well, nobody ever does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, like people, they, people go in and out on everything. Yeah. With yeah. the time, the title yeah. roll in and out. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. you listen to any of it. You, you keep up with your uh, with your viewership and audience and all that? I started to recently right. just because I've hit a plateau and I'm like, really? okay, it's like, how can I break to that next level now? How do you... Um, the system's in, but now it's just the awareness. How do you... Um, so I forgot what I was going to ask you. Um, you can't ask me the SEO stuff, man. That's the sauce. No, I no, can't no. Let you know I, no I was going to ask you how do you uh, how do you get how do you how do you calculate your feedback? What do you get? You know, it's just from comments or whatever. Or you... From feedback, I get. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Either online or in person. Like last night, I did three shows, and at two of them, somebody came up and like, dude, that interview you did. That's that dope. Was perfect, man. I need. Bro, to that's hear stuff. That. That's stuff that keeps you going, man. Oh man. Yeah. Totally. yeah keep. I'm telling you, man. Like more people. Fly and Los had to tell me that for the longest, bro. People are listening, trust me. I'm like, man, I don't know, I don't know, man. What we got to do? What we got to do? Like, bro, trust me. But then, like, I probably say I probably rap it because I can talk forever. But I rap it on this, man. Like, I think the biggest thing that's been for me this year is like, I'd like to feel like the people that I've been around or I've been had been blessed to meet. What separates them from everybody else is like this pace, and they have a pace that like is their pace. Mm. But I think that pace comes from confidence. And I think confidence comes from making a whole bunch of mistakes. Right? And those mistakes come from taking a chance. So I'm like, okay, I've taken a chance. I've made the mistakes. Got a little bit of confidence. So let me figure out my pace. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, bro, if you walk into the room with Will Packer, you're like, I understand why he's Will Packer. You walk into the room with Puff Daddy, you're like, dude, there's a reason this is Puff Daddy. Like, he just controls the room man he has a pace Lowe's has a pace um, Steve Harvey has a pace man Kevin Hart all these guys we've done work with Shaq has a pace bro now it helps that he's 7'2 seven, seven but he's a mo- straight up mogul dude genius bro straight up Gen- mogul. and like 
I've been blessed to like just get all this free game from these dudes. Wow. You know, so yeah. it's like these guys have a pace about themselves that I think hard, like, I don't think hard work is a thing. I think that's, I think hard work is a thing of like the 50s as far as like physical hard labor. Like, this, you're working right now, but this isn't like hard work mm-hmm. by how we're used to it being defined. So now it's like, let me find my pace within this hard work. Cause like some people work hard through like, Stock exchange. Is that really hard work? Are you sweating when you're like moving money around and making more money, losing some money? It just depends. So pace is my thing, bro. 85, I think, is finding his pace. Dope. Well, dude, thanks for sitting down and sharing yeah. that with us, man. Seriously. Yeah. You, I knew you had a lot of game. <laughs> Even when I meet you outside, you're like, I don't really have much to say, yeah. you know, and then this is turning to over an hour. So yeah, okay, I'm glad cool. we could crack open chat here. No, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate yeah. you having me. You should have who you should have on. Is uh DC, he's the only one that hasn't done it from '85. For real? Yeah, yeah. I'll I, 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 I ask him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DC's a genius, man. He's no way doubt. smart. I've already researched him. I'm ready. That dude's a genius, bro. There's oh. some people I've already researched that. So in the day, if they're like, "I'll do it in an hour," I'm like, All "Yeah, right, let's do it." I ask him if you want to do it. It's yeah. cool. This is cool, bro. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you. What were you gonna say before? I, who do I need on here? You said. Oh, uh, I don't know. I was gonna say somebody. I was like, man, it'd be really good if you had if you did. If you interview this guy, I'm sure I'll text you if I remember. It was it wasn't somebody related to eighty five. The comedian? I can't remember. Bro. I know. I, I cut you off to shoot my shot on no. DC. Hey, it's all good. <laughs> shoot the shot, man. Go for it. What? Keep shooting, bro. It's gonna go in one day. I'll ask him. I ain't got no problem asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you think of that person, let me know because you never know that. I will. Be the... I will. But this is cool, man. I'm glad you did your thing. I lo- listen to the one you did with uh, what's my boy up at Uptown? Not Uptown. Um. What's the comedy club up there in Gwinnett? Atlanta Comedy Theater. Gary, yeah. Gary? Gary's yeah, funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was right after the Steve Brown situation. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was crazy. There's a lot of game in that one. Man, Steve was ducking them shots. <laughs> that was crazy. I like Steve. <laughs> yeah, he was on here, too. Steve's a cool dude. Yeah, man. He came on the show. He was on the show. Yeah, yeah I listened to that one to research him and all that. Yeah, I was I was thinking about I was like, man, this dude really does research, man. I hope you don't find nothing crazy. All I did was all I found with you on connected with eighty five South was like that time you guys did that show where it was whack and you almost didn't even think about doing the show. Like I don't there, apparently there was a show back in the day that nobody showed up and oh, like, the Booker bro. was tweaking <laughs> or whatever. Now you're selling a house of blues, but what happened on that oh, the show the hustle? Man, dog. All right, so look, without giving too much information away. Uh, we had a show so a lot of times it wasn't an 85 South show it was supposed to be but budget whatever whatever and this is where you just gotta trust your six cents but I didn't I just went for it anyway man we're good we're good we got it the guy was most I mean you're gonna learn as you do enough business you're gonna learn who's serious and who is it doesn't take long to figure out who's serious about it you, you can be polite about it you gotta be rude but this dude like there was too many like hiccups but I was still like let's just do it and the fellas was like alright you know I got you let's do it get us all down to Tallahassee and we pull up and I'm like I just it's funny Chico texts me right before we go to the show he's like hey man make sure everything's good and Chico never does that it's always like Chad you got it for him to do that he already knew like something right and I think Los was fresh off the show so like none of us was on our A game to be honest with you we get down there, and the dude, uh, you know how they do, ah, man, you know. Mm-hmm. When they do the, ah, let me talk to you, <laughs> I'm like, all right, here we go. Man, well, you know, you know, we're going to have the money, but people in Tallahassee, yeah, I hear you, bro. People in Tallahassee. I hear you, bro, and I respect it, but I can't get on stage. Man, but, you know, if you can just do us a, I hear you, bro, then I respect it. But I can't get on stage. Okay, you want to tell him? Ah, no, nah, nah, you know, just work with me. I'll work with you. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I mean, we're already here. I'll wait as long as you need me to wait. Uh huh. So, what's funny, we huddle with the guys, and I'm like, look, bro, this is what it is. And then these are my guys, so they're like, well, what can he do? So he goes, call, it was crazy. He calls his one dude. We shouldn't have did this, man, but that's part of the story now. He calls this guy. This guy appears like out of nowhere in this back alley behind a club. 
And he was like, hey, man, come take a ride with me. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, but I'll wait. <laughs> as long as you need me that to. That pace, right? That yeah. Chad pace. I'll wait as long as you need me to, bro. I have a lot of patience. I have more patience than you probably want me to have. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, man. So this dude drives to wherever he drives, comes back with like the sack full of cash. And he was like, come to the back with me. And I shouldn't have did it, but I'm like, all right. So I walk in the back, go through like these back doors, back door. This dude pulls out all this cash. Will they go on stage for this? I was like, yeah, probably so. So we come back to the fellas. I'm like, yo, this is what it is. He's got this. And then Los and Chico was like, man, we already down here. Let's just make an episode out of it. We'll make it work. Watch us. Trust us. I'm like, all right. This is where I got to trust y'all. You got it. Right. Joe sets up the camp. What's crazy is my man. Well, nah, that's, nah I won't share that. Um, what up? Nah, I ain't going to share it. So, no? Nah? We get on stage, they sauce. do that thing. Yeah, they get on stage. Nah, it's just, just a, we'll keep that internal. It's, we get on stage. <laughs> all right, we get on stage. They do their thing. And it's crazy. They're like roasting these guys. You've seen it, I'm sure. Uh huh. They're roasting the guys for like an hour. Mm-hmm. And like that becomes like this classic thing. And I'm like, there's no way in hell Joe's going to put this out. And Joe's like, nah, bro, this is funny. And I'm like, nah, there's no way, bro. Because I was just sick. Because I'm thinking I messed up. And I'm like. Mad at myself. They put it out. Chico and Los kill it. They was cool. It was like, man, let's get out of here. I got to go to Wildin' Out tomorrow. Got them back on some flights, and we got back to, I got back to Atlanta. But now nah, that's like, hit boy, it was crazy. Puff, we in the meeting with Puff. He was like, man, they had y'all on the Chitlin' Circuit, and y'all in Tallahassee, Florida. Who's the one that, that, that blew that? <laughs> they all was like, Chad. I'm like, man. I was like, but that's the authenticity that we tell you about. Yeah, man. We show it all. And he was like. And that's why I love y'all. Boom. I don't like this though. My man. That was cool. Dude. So, yeah, that was crazy. Thank you so much for doing this, man. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, bro. Is that before we get out of here, is there, is there anything else you want the world to know? Yeah. Um, we have some shows coming up. Okay. And we want y'all to come to all of our shows. So go to 85southshow.com. There's going to be a link when you scroll down that has all of our tickets. And we're adding more dates. Houston has been active about getting us to come. We're working on it. I promise you. Um, Dallas we're working on, I promise you. Um, LA we're working on and New York we're working on. So please go to 85southshow.com and pay attention. I think right now we got Long Beach up there. We got San Diego up there. Memphis is up there. I'm missing the city. Um, and then, um, oh, Charlotte. We're coming to Charlotte too. And listen, um, also Atlanta's been telling us to come back. We have not forgotten about Atlanta, but when you come back now that we've done what we've done, you got to do it right. Right, so right, we're right, just right. trying to make sure it's right for y'all. So 85southshow.com, go buy some tickets and subscribe to our page. Boom. And while you're at it, Hot Breath Podcast, my man. Man, appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, Chad. No doubt, no doubt, man. Nice. This is fun. Yeah, let's give one of those. Oh, no, I got a point. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Point there it is. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, appreciate that one that bad, man. Dude, that one. For real.